You need to know these six things before using Canva. Ready? Let's do this. Hi, my lovely people. It's Natalia and welcome back to my channel where I help you create better content and grow on social media. Today's Canva tutorial for beginners is slightly different, but still jam packed with value so that you can kick off your design journey the right way. If you're a Canva user already, don't worry. There may be some tips for you here that you've not been aware of. So definitely stick around for this one. Let's go. You open up Canva, you create a new design, look around the editor, excited to try all the features only to stare at a blank screen for minutes, not knowing where to even begin. You're putting some shapes and elements on the canvas, but it looks nothing like you've envisioned in your mind and certainly not like all the other beautiful designs that claim to have come from Canva. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make when starting their Canva journey. Don't start from scratch. One of the biggest reasons that makes Canva such a great tool is the hundreds of thousands of templates that are available in their library. Sure, you're encouraged to get creative and there are features there that support you in doing so, but there's no point in starting from scratch if you're not a designer or not well seasoned in creating graphics. Instead, try searching for a specific template that may work in your industry. Here's where my first tip comes in to help you find the perfect templates for you. Start from the homepage and the search bar at the very top. Instead of looking for a specific format first, try searching for your niche or industry instead. For example, if you're a food blogger, just type that and see what Canva suggests. Apart from the formats that show up with the platform icons right next to them, you'll see the magnifying glass with keywords that you can use to find niche specific templates. From here, you can simply browse to get inspired and start the ones you love for future reference. If you find a template that feels right but has the wrong dimensions, you can simply resize it later on. By the way, I've linked a short in the description for you where I show three ways to resize in Canva, Two of them are completely free, so check it out. If you're looking for specific dimensions only, just filter the results at the top. Not only can you select the format for any platform you want, but you can also choose a specific vibe or even a color. That's one of my favorite ways to discover new templates. You can also try Magic Design, where you simply upload your photo and Canva AI recognizes and suggests the best templates for you too. So cool. There's one very important thing to remember though. Don't take things as they are. While the templates provided by Canva are fantastic, it's crucial to customize them to match your brand or your personal style. And that's our point too. Simply using a template as is can make your content look generic or repetitive. Remember, any other user of Canva can choose the same template, so you shouldn't just use it as is without any changes. It is a huge part of creating a consistent brand image online and making your voice unique. After all, you want your followers to recognize you even subconsciously when they scroll and for the new visitors to see you as a professional with a beautifully designed, cohesive and engaging feed. Which one are you likely to trust more? This one or this? Drop a comment down below. I'd love to know your opinion here. Customizing templates in Canva is super easy to do. Here we've got a few options as well. First, the easiest and the most professional I'd say is to use the brand hub. This is a Canva Pro feature that you can find on the homepage and from the hub, you can add your own custom brand kits that contain all of your brand's visual assets like your logos, fonts, colors, elements, photos, icons, etc. Once you have it set up, every time you're in the editor, you can easily apply your style to any design. Simply go to the design tab, click styles, and you'll see your brand kit there. Just click the fonts to change them and keep clicking the palette as well to shuffle the colors. Super cool. Of course, you can add any of your saved assets from the brand hub tab too. A free alternative would be to change the colors one by one and change to a specific hex code. Below appears a change all option which changes all things separately for the elements and fonts so you have to do it manually for both. It's much more work but again it's absolutely necessary. Take some time to personalize the colors, fonts and layout of the template to reflect your unique identity. It's such a simple step that can make a huge difference in the impact that your visual content has. By the way if you want to learn how to design captivating content with Canva for your social media and business then sign up on the waitlist for my upcoming Canva course for beginners. I'm building the most transformational resource for you to help you become a creative powerhouse, so can't wait to see you there. We've just mentioned a big difference between Canva Pro and the free accounts, so it's a great time to talk about some more. Let's start with the obvious, which is that Canva free is completely free, while Canva Pro is $10.99 in British pounds, $12.99 in American dollars or euros, etc. With both plans, you get one person in and you can design in the same amazing drag and drop editor with access to some incredible 
AI features, templates, and elements. Plus, you have the ability to collaborate with others by way of sharing, commenting, or co-designing. The biggest difference starts with the number of templates and elements you've got access to. For Canva free, that's 250,000 plus templates and one plus million elements. For Pro, it's over 600,000 and 100 million respectively. It does make a difference. As a free user, you can use Pro elements in your designs, but every time you go to download them, you'll be prompted to pay for the Pro assets used. Similarly, in Canva free, you get five gigabytes of storage, while in Pro, it's one terabyte, so you can be much more relaxed about your uploads. Apart from that, Canva Pro comes with some incredible features that you won't get on the free plan. I've already mentioned the Brand Hub, which to me is probably the most important one that I use every single day. Everyone's favorite is the background remover, which is a feature that has so many use cases. Same goes for videos because we have a feature for removing backgrounds here too. And for my fellow content creators, the content planner is also a cool feature to let you schedule your posts straight from Canva. There's magic eraser for quickly removing elements from photos, bulk create for masquerading designs from just one original, and so many more. When you look at it from the perspective of this all-in-one tool with a bunch of incredible features that make your work easier and a broad library of templates and elements, which you could only get by paying for a stock library or buying a bunch of asset bundles, I'd say Canva Pro is well worth the money. Ultimately, you're the one who needs to decide if that's the right option for you. I've got a link down in the description for you that gives you Canva Pro for 45 days for free, which is two whole weeks more than you'd normally get. So check it out, try all the features and see how it works for you. By now, I think you may already know what Canva can do, but let's talk about what it can't, or at least what you shouldn't try doing with it. So point number four, know the limitations. The big one here is logos. Let me preface this by saying there's such a range of circumstances where people may need to make a logo themselves first instead of having it professionally designed. Starting with a simple lack of budget, but also students who get assignments during their courses, people starting projects that they're just testing out initially, hobby projects, and even some nonprofits for initial use. That's where Canva can be an answer and help you design a logo. That being said, if you want to create a professional logo for your brand, your business, or your clients, Canva is not the right tool for you. First of all, you can't really use any elements or photos to create a logo since these are not licensed for logo use. And also you wouldn't be able to trademark them, which is super important to protect your brand. Fonts and simple shapes like circles, rectangles, triangles, lines can be used to create a logo in Canva. So that's legal. And you can also use your own uploaded assets that you have the right to use or you created, but you'll still only be able to download download it as a PNG, SVG, which is great for web, but not necessarily for print and PDF print. The most important part is that Canva is not a vector app, meaning you cannot resize the elements or your logo without losing quality. If you think about it, you should be able to put your logo on something small like a bracelet or a pen and something big like a poster or a massive billboard. Only a vector file will scale without getting pixelated or blurry. Don't even get me started on color profiles, outlining fonts, etc. Basically, if you want a simple logo for a small project that you don't plan on trademarking, by all means, create a logo in Canva. But if you want something to represent your brand professionally, hire a designer or create it in Adobe Illustrator. Also, please know this is not legal advice. So if you're in any doubt, it's best to reach out to the Canva support team. They're fabulous at explaining the details for your specific issue. Another thing you won't be able to do in Canva is to create custom shapes and manipulate them to create more elaborate curves transform shapes, cue things, etc. I know it frustrates a lot of people if you're not aware of it and they come from using Adobe Suite. It's just not a tool for this type of design. The last one I want to mention here is the Canva websites. Sure, you can create simple landing pages and one page websites in Canva, but they don't have many important functionalities. You can not really sell products. There's no option for blogging and it cannot be optimized for SEO, which means Google won't read or index it either. Either. It's more like a link to a design than a true website. Just as with logos, you can absolutely use it as a temporary thing, a showcase of your offer, a link in bio page, but not really as a full professional website with all the capabilities you'd expect from one. Hopefully this will be developed in the future, but at the moment, these are quite big limitations. Now let's move on to a hot topic that you need to be aware of before you start using Canva and that's licensing. Again, since I'm not a lawyer and don't share any legal advice, I first want to point you to this amazing document created by Canva to help you understand all the rules for using the platform legally and in line with their guidelines. It's covering all the different 
some cases you may need to use Canva for and explains what the rules are for using fonts, elements, photos, video, graphics, or music. There's also a great YouTube video with Matt from Canva Design School explaining all this in a very approachable way, which I'll link down below along with the licensing website. You need to know what you can and cannot do with Canva before you start using it to protect yourself and your brand and respect the platform and the amazing creators that contribute to it so that we have something to design with. The most important rule you have to know is that you cannot resell unaltered templates, graphics, etc. I see loads of people in places like Etsy, Gumroad, reselling the exact same templates that you can find in the Canva library without changing a single thing, and that's a huge no-no. There are also restrictions on pro content and templates or size limits for web publications like websites or eBooks. While you can use all Canva photos, fonts, graphics to create designs for printing on products that you intend to sell, think merch, mugs, pens, t-shirts, etc. you're not really allowed to sell standalone prints of Canva content, such as a t-shirt with a stock photo printed on it with no other design elements. I can't even begin to cover the terms in a video like this, and I don't think I'm the best person to do it anyway. So again, I highly recommend you read the terms for yourself, and if unsure, reach out to Canva support. And for the last point that can save all of you a lot of headaches along the way, stay organized. As you create more designs, the files can quickly become overwhelming. To avoid chaos and save yourself from endless scrolling, it's super important to keep all of your Canva projects organized. First of all, name all of your designs the moment you create them. Create folders for different categories, label them correctly, and consider using consistent naming conventions. By staying organized, you can easily search for, find, and reuse your designs, which will save you so much time and make the whole workflow as smooth as possible. Coming from a girly who used to have whole folders worth of Photoshop files with no clue of what they were because they all said untitled one, you don't want to go there. I'm not going to spend too much time in here because I have a whole Canva organization video coming up with some of my best tips I've learned along the way. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to not miss this one. In the meantime, watch this playlist right now to become a better designer and learn how to create some amazing designs in Canva. Thank you so, so much for watching. I wish you an incredible day and I'll see you next time.